Welcome to Living Piano TV. I'm Robert Eston, your host, and this is the second of a three-part series of how to practice the piano. The first one was Five Steps to Memorization. This show is Secrets of Sight Reading, and I'm going to start with a personal story for you. You know, I was so lucky to study with my father, Morton Estrin, a great teacher. And for any of you who are in the New York metropolitan area, at, he's still accepting students. He's on Long Island, the greatest teacher I ever studied with. And I had some illustrious teachers, including uh, some very famous pianists. Uh, so anyway, uh, I was a very, very poor sight reader. Because while I learned how to memorize from my father from the first lesson, I was kind of lazy as a kid, truth be known, and I didn't read really at all. <laughs> I would just memorize my pieces uh, for my lessons, and that was it. Then I practiced French horn, which I also uh, played. And here's what happened. I was in high school, and uh, you know, I was playing Chopin ballades by this point, and Liszt Hungarian Rhapsodies, and Beethoven sonatas. Well, the choral director came up to me and he said, Bob, you know, I lost my accompanist and I was wondering if you could help me out. So he handed me a stack of music and I opened it up and I knew as soon as I opened it, the only way I could do this music is if I memorized it. If you saw last week's show, yeah, you got it. Right hand alone, a small section, memorizing, left hand alone, memorizing, put the hands together. I didn't have the time to learn the stack of music, and I couldn't read it. I couldn't read anything above the most basic level, not even a four-part chorale like a church choir would sing, because I never did it. Well, I had an aha moment, and this is an amazing story, and this can be something for you that can help you with your reading. My father was performing at Carnegie Hall with Full Symphony Orchestra, that Tchaikovsky B-flat minor concerto. By this point, I was at the Manhattan School of Music, uh, studying with Constance Keen, enjoying things, but I still was a terrible reader. Uh, but I came home for a visit. Uh, I used to teach piano on weekends on Long Island when I was going to the Manhattan School of Music, so I was there. And my father said, Bob, look, I need to play this with someone just to try it out here. And so, you know, I had two pianos in the studio, and he put me down on one and gave me the score, which is a book this thick, 30-minute work at least, maybe 40 minutes, the Tchaikovsky B-flat minor piano concerto. And I said, I can't possibly read this. I'll miss, you know, more than half the notes. Uh, and of course, <laughs> far more than half the notes. But he said, just do it. So I, I figured, what the heck? So I opened the book, I put it on the piano, and... I knew that if I took my eyes off that book, I would never be able to find my way back. So I just looked at the score and I counted and I let my hands move and I hit some of the notes, but we went through the entire concerto and I never got lost because I just counted and I kept my hands moving trying to hit whatever notes I could possibly hit that were right. And I hit some right notes. Ever since I realized I can read anything, and I've been getting more and more of the notes. <laughs> and it's as simple as that. Because you see, it's all a matter of keeping your eyes on that score, just like um, in Star Wars, uh, where the, the Jedi Knight, he, he, you're talking about, let the force guide you, Luke. And he puts the shield over his eyes, and that's when he was able to really be at his top of his game. And it's the same thing with uh, playing, uh, reading, sight reading on the piano. It seems like I have to look at my hands or I can't read. It's exactly the opposite. I'll tell you another little personal story. This is a funny one. I was about four years old. And I was on, on my sidewalk riding my, um, my, uh, my two-wheeler with training wheels. And, you know, I hadn't learned how to ride it without the training wheels. And, and I was riding it. And at a certain point, I looked down and noticed that one of my training wheels had fallen off. And I was horrified at this. And I was just riding fine. But I, I knew I couldn't ride a bike, uh, you know, a two-wheeler without training wheels. So I did the only logical thing. I jumped off the bike. <laughs> That's what I did. I, I chose to jump off the bike rather than to continue riding it, which I was doing without any problems at all. Because I had in my head that I couldn't do it. And it's the same thing with sight reading. If you're thinking, I have to look at my hands. Well, you can't. Because if you look down, you lose where you are. So that's the big secret. Now, having the discipline to do that is pretty much impossible unless you're playing with other musicians. 
because if it sounds god awful you're going to stop and correct it it's human nature but if you're with somebody else you can't you have to keep going the surprise you're going to find is even when you think that you've done a terrible job other musicians don't care so much how many notes you get or don't get what they do care about very much is the balance and staying with them is very important being sensitive to their performance listening to them playing the right dynamic level it's being musical and if you can grab a, some of the right notes of course that's much better you don't want to be bombastic about it but you grab what you can and you, and you flesh out from what you can see because you maybe you can't see everything it goes by in a big blur of black dots but you can see the melody. You can see maybe the bass line and, and flesh out some of the other notes in between. And yes, you can, you can, you can actually enhance that soloist's performance in, incredibly. Or a singer, uh, they appreciate it more than you'll ever imagine, even when you think you're doing terribly. It's kind of like seat of your pants sometimes. Because I don't care who you are, you're gonna to come to a piece that's above your reading level where you're gonna to have to do what I'm describing. It's nice when you can read all the notes, but it just isn't always that way. And I've been thrust into positions where for competitions I've been called at the last minute and have to play very difficult contemporary music where I've had to read it, where I didn't have time to practice it, where I, I like the comfort zone. I gotta tell you, that's why I practice, so that I can be comfortable in performance, make the practice hard, make the performance easy. That's kind of the way I work. But sometimes it doesn't work that way and you're doing somebody a huge favor. And you have to get into that intense mode of counting like crazy, keeping your eyes moving, and listening. Listening to the soloist and blending and making it work. And that is, ladies and gentlemen, the secrets of sight reading. And we're at the end of another Living Piano uh, broadcast. Join me next time for You Can Improvise. Yes, you, all of you. I'm going to show you how, and you'll have fun with it, too, I promise. So thanks for joining me, and uh, visit my website, livingpiano.com. See you next time.